and money creates a rift between the sisters, or rather, uh, augments this rift. Also, the fact that Lear has joined Cordelia and that Francis' army is invading England incites a conversation about Albany's true loyalties and of kind opinions. In addition, Edgar has already found out that Edmund has betrayed him and is taking action to get revenge on him by giving Albany a letter revealing Edmund and Goneril's romance in this scene. In this extract, we will explore the themes of betrayal and loyalty through each character, and we will see how they apply both to the, to the spheres of their personal lives and to the politics around them. At the beginning of the scene, Edmund is worried about Albany's betraying them. However, he does not want to accuse him of right and bring trouble onto himself. Um, so he uses a new euphemism by asking if Albany has changed course. Also, it's interesting to see that Edmund is accusing Albany of always changing his mind and not sticking, uh, not sticking to his loyalty. He chose Edmund's hypocrisy since he would undoubtedly change alliances himself without hesitation if it benefited him. We can see that Edmund is only is loyal but only to himself and not to others, whether, whether as Albany, as we will see later, is not loyal to his own true beliefs, as he does believe that Lear has the rightful claim, but is more loyal to others uh, and his uh, external alliances. So Edmund's development through the scene can be seen at the, with his monologue at the end, which goes from line 59 to 73. And in this monologue, Ed, uh, Edmund starts as he struggles because he has sworn love to both sisters. Sisters whose jealousy of others is like snake, which once again, the theme of animality which comes. And the pastor knows he cannot be with both sisters. And while he knows choosing Regan is a rational choice since she's widowed, he also knows that Goneril would not pardon him if he chooses her sister because she's married. Edmund continues by plotting against Albany the bastard knows, uh, sorry, acknowledges that Albany will be useful to win the war against the French army. However, after the future win, he plans on Albany's PD taking off, which is a euphemism meaning Albany's murder. Albany, uh, sorry, Edmund thirst for blood is not finished as he wants to, as he, well, yeah, as he wants to kill Cordelia and King Lear, which is the opposite of Albany's desire, which would be to spare them. The monologue ends with. Edwin acknowledging that he will need to take actions to pursue his desire, and this once again shows that West Christian was saying that he only is loyal to himself. Now if we look at the character of Regan, we can see that in this scene she's, she tries to use flattery and manipulation to get the information she wants from Edwin. In the, si in the six, sixth line, she uses the adjective sweet and calls Edmund a lord, which both have very po strong positive connotations, especially for Edmund, because you know, we know he wants nobility and recognition. And recogni recognition. Uh, we can also see the strong desire she has for this information, for she repeats twice that she wants the truth in the same line she says. And in line eight she says, tell me but truly, and then proceeds with, but then speak the truth. Um, we also see in this, in this same uh, section that Regan assumes the betrayal of her, of her sister without, without proof because she admits to Edmund that she has already assumed that they have consummated in her husband's bed. Uh, she's also ready to betray her sister even if she finds out that Goneril really loves Edmund and tells Edmund, be not familiar with her. By using the imperative phrase, we can see the intensity of her feeling and the fact that she's given an order to Edmund and she, that she will not take any other option. We can also see that her feelings are in fact true because she says to Ed, when she asks to Ed, when she asks Edmund if she loves, if he loves Goneril, she asks, uh, do you not love my sister at line nine? By asking the question in the negative, she shows what she wants the answer to be, and uh, no. Uh, if you look at, uh, Gon at the other sister, Goneril, we, we can also see that she's prepared She's also prepared to betray her sister, but, she, but more so, she's also pre prepared to betray her own country. She says um, at line 21, I had rather lose the battle uh, than that sister should lose on him and me. Uh, by comparing the war and, and this man, she, she chose the, left, the length at which she's willing to go to get him. Um, but in the end of the book, we can see that she loses both both the war, uh, both her power and Edmund, 
because treasury only attracts treasury, and that's why uh, Goneril, Edman, and Regan all, all want each other. Uh, they deserve each other, but not love and dialogue. Also, you can see that uh, Goneril tells Regan on line 22 with a euphemism, I know the riddle. And this means, I know you're watching me, because Goneril knows what Regan is trying to plot. And by doing so, Goneril tells her widowed sister that she knows she's trying to pursue Edmund. And furthermore, she, Goneril is trying to discourage her sister from flirting with the bastard because at the end, Goneril wants uh, Edmund. So in this verse, the sister's rivalry for Edmund love is shown, which is a rivalry that will later take a dramatic turn when Goneril poisons her sister. Uh, finally, if we look at the last character of Albany, we can see the, the theme of loyalty uh, and the dilemma he plays inside him. He has to struggle between the loyalty he has to his country and to his king. At line 29, he's, he says, He does to us as friends invades our land, yet he calls the king. And he also said, he says that the opposition has just and heavy causes. Uh, the advert just shows the that even though he will defend England against France invasion, he recognizes the, the value of what Lear is doing. And more so by calling their causes just, uh, he says that they're good, but heavy also says that, that they're well justified. Like, have like free So and Edgar's only appearance in these scenes occur uh, when he is disguised as a poor man, which is something he already did early in the play when he was poor Tom. And so Edgar says to Albany <coughs> at line 20, uh, no, yeah, in Sutton 3 says, If ever your grace had speech with a man so poor, hear me one word, which is in line 40 and 41. Here, Edgar is trying to talk in a mysterious way to tickle uh, Albany's curiosity, and it works since Albany decides to listen to it. Then Edgar follows through by talking to Albany from lines 42 to 47, and mainly, Edgar beforehand gives a letter to gives a letter Oswald was carrying to Albany. Edgar does, does not only reveal Goneril's feeling for Edmund, but also that Edmund is tasked with killing Albany. Then Edgar continues by alluding to a trial that will turn into a fight between Albany and Edmund. This fight will save Albany's honor or be the cause of his death. Why save Arnold, Albany's honor is that since his wife is flirting with another man, his uh, his honor was his he was dishonored, and by killing Edmund, he would bring back honor. And if Albany win, Edgar tells him to let the trumpets, to let the trumpets sound. This is an allusion to the legend of Tristan and Isolde, and the sails color, where the black sail meant Isolde was coming to help Tristan, and the white, uh, sorry, the black meant Isolde was not coming, and the white sail meant she was coming to save. Unfortunately, we know that the confusion what the confusion brings in this legend and that both lovers died. In conclusion, scene 22 is a, prelude, is a prelude to the play's unraveling. The rivalry between the sisters is getting starting to become serious. Truth is starting to be known despite the lies, the manipulation, and the betrayal between the characters, and the war is coming to its end. Okay, so it's called a free-for-all because it's a free-for-all. <laughs> Go ahead. So this is a thing we can ask for more... Anything. Just discuss about so what you guys all said. You, talk, uh, you said in your thing <coughs> that uh, the only reason the leader appeals to, to the gods with faith to curse uh, his daughter is because he has no power now. But I think that truly to Lear, the worst thing he can curse onto his daughter is faith and the gods because even when he has power, I truly believe that he thinks that they, they, the gods are, are ever more powerful than him, and that's the worst thing that his daughter can have. Well, it's true that throughout the play, many of the characters believe in faith. We can still see that the consequences of their actions are, are the result of their, their own actions, and that while they believe in faith, many of the things that happen, such as Edmund uh, betraying his father, are not caused by 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 nature or by God, it's Edmund's own decisions. And no, I was just saying, like, it's interesting that, like, like all of the scenes and everything, like, 
phrase also comes back a lot. Like when you mentioned the like the quotation from Kant, like about the stars and stuff. Do you really do you believe fate plays a role when really, as you said, it's mostly like their own actions. Like the king made a decision, made a choice, and everything that could, like like followed from there. So fate might be involved in some way, but really it's like only choices have been taken. Like yeah. when it comes to like Edgar also like, chooses to be disguised, Kent also. Like, yeah. Yeah. But it is like so. Like for Edmund, he tr it is his choice to like, try and go like to betray his father. But he anyway is caught up by fate because like he starts as a bastard, he's at a very low point, and then he tries to like take property, take power. But at the end, he dies, and he he just lets go. Like at the oh, so I think at the last kind scene. of karma. Mm -hmm. Like he, he, he kind of returns where he began. Right? Yeah. 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 So it's like the idea of the wheel. Yeah, he says the wheel has come full circle. Yeah. That yeah. means that yeah. when Edgar tells him what he did, he has nothing to say, and all he can say is that, well, my faults have yeah. caught up to me. He immediately admits, like, yeah, I did all this, like, yeah. it's done, I'm over. Well, at the, be at the beginning, <laughs> at the beginning we, we think that the people who are good have been, like, betrayed and have and are bad conditions, like, uh, uh, Edgar is playing a fool and like Kent has been banished. So we think that karma like is not doing sword and like the people the good people are being punished, but at the end we can see that they are the ones who survive and they are the ones who kill the kingdom. Mm -hmm. so so I feel like that's like it's not like only the people yeah. who like are not the last that survive because currently as you said she was really like this guy as this lovely person and she also died when she was like brutal and she died at the end. Sarah, I have a question for you. So you know, at the end you said that well, Edgar and Kent are kind of alike because they're both going hiding. Kent wants to serve his master, but Edgar wants to help himself. Yeah. But doesn't have some point also that he doesn't want to reveal the truth, so that he will be able to gain once again, once again his father's trust. Yeah, but he also wants to gain his status back. It's like he lost mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. So proving his father, gaining back like his power, all is for himself. Whereas Ken, he um, this guy is to help Lear. He doesn't want to benefit from his action, but more to help Lear. In but I don't know if I see it like that at that point because uh, I think that mostly uh, Edward disguised himself to to survive because everyone around him was looking for him to like to bring him to inspire where he was going to die. So he wasn't really looking to gain back his. Power and everything he was just trying to survive and not to be killed. Yeah. Well, he could yeah. just have left the country and there's in but exile. He couldn't leave the country because yeah. all the ports yeah. were closed off. Yeah, yeah. Or he could just have to guide himself to get out of the country. But it's less risky to play. And he, he, it's also his own country, he's not going to leave like, for no reason. And he didn't make any move to gain his power back. He was just there playing so mad and like. All the things arranged for him to like to see his father again, and that's like yeah, again like the kind of pain that would push him to yeah, pass his father, but he didn't what? do any action to him. But he could have disguised and just go away. He couldn't. No. Like he no, could disguise, like as as he said, as for Tom, he could have passed away and go to like France or another country. Well, I think that the play shows that le that folly so even though at first glance it seems negative in the play, is often used as like either like a uh, sort of like tool to reveal like the betrayal around him or like a tool to like save yourself. It's more about trying to save Hollywood and not doing anything. Yeah, but like the yeah. madness, the madness so is what allows him to survive because like in the mad world, if you have to be mad yourself to like. Yeah, but safe. I think, I think Edgar isn't only motivated by survival because when he's reunited with his father, he doesn't disclose his identity immediately, which, which if he had, had did, he would be fine, but no, instead he waits and tries to educate his well, it's father. about honor, so. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's not right. just about survival. Yeah, that's it's just about honor. Survival. Yeah. Survival. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what did you say, Kirsten? Well, the survival of his honor. Yes, 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 yeah. He does not want only to, like, keep his physical body safe, but he wants to like keep Edgar safe yeah. and not like fall mm -hmm. to time. Yeah, so that when he comes back, yeah. it's not like, oh, you did all this, and you're not on a boat. Yeah. Yeah. was there anything that popped out? Yeah, I actually wanted to ask, sorry, I'm not like my voice is not the best today, but Sheila, I actually wanted to ask you for the, uh, 
But you, you said that like, you are just dance with madness. Is that was great. Or you don't. Like, no, I think that you just think being better to his madness because like before going mad, he was really blind to his daughter's scheming and everything. And it was only when he was trying to be like mad that he was saying, he was seeing the world around him, like poor people. He was saying like, oh, I didn't help you when I was king. And even saying that, like, oh, my daughter, or, like those rich things. So I think it's through his madness that he gave like sight and like understanding. Just as like Gloucester who like only after suffering see the truth about his truth, like his son. Yeah, and, and only after losing his eyes. Yeah, also for like Edmund, like I did, yes, he's caught up by fate, but he still manages to like basically just, like screw up like the whole situation like for everyone. <coughs> yeah. so, like in a way, he still gets his way. So, like he has like kind of accomplished his task by kind of like, just ruining the relationship between. The, the, yeah, maybe, but at the end, he doesn't. He never kind of sees the. He receives his Earl because he won't be able to live. You know, if he would have become the the Earl, uh, he could have at the end of the day come, uh, yeah, accomplish his goal and live in a castle and be the instead uh, <laughs> of master of the castle, not be like the yeah. bastard son of so. But is he just secret too much? He already oh, yeah. so the thing. If he wouldn't be a bastard from the beginning, he wouldn't ask for so much. But since he was raised mm, as like in, yeah, in a society, society and also that, yeah, that he not only protects him, but he had opportunities, so he wants more. Because mm -hmm. when you don't have nothing, you can like mm -hmm. you can want more, but more is nothing. But, but he since like he had something, he wants even more. Yeah. 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 He's not able. He's not able.